Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Kemaford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. Employment in the USA is bouncing between 3.7 and 5 or so percent these days. And great employees are harder to find than ever before. And if you're hiring, chances are really good that you're rating another team's, another organization's rock stars. So, you know, once you get great hires on board, you need to keep them. And in past blogs um, and podcasts, I've shared proven techniques proven tools, proven ways to recruit rock stars and to onboard them and to engage them and to identify signs if they're considering quitting. So let's now focus on what's happening in their brain when the honeymoon phase is over and once they are no longer in that new hire category. You know, honeymoons end (laughs) and then our new hire goes native, right? So based on an informal poll of my leadership and culture coaching clients, reality sets in kind of like with a new love relationship, right? And the honeymoon is over usually after the first 90 days, sometimes even 60 at work, depending on the role. And this is when a new hire then is most at risk of buyer's remorse, right? Of regretting that they accepted a role at your organization that maybe isn't quite what they had hoped it would be. So this is also when a new hire has quote unquote gone native. They're now a part of the tribe. They no longer have that fresh unbiased perspective of an outsider. Now, going native isn't a bad thing. It, it happens out of our deep need to belong, you know, to belong with the tribe so that we're safe and we matter. And if the tribe is in a tricky state, buyer's remorse could become an epidemic and rapidly spread. We've all seen influencers that leave the tribe and take some of the top performers with them. So here's how to prevent this. Let's look at six questions that reveal that yikes, buyer's remorse is starting or rearing its ugly head. And think back to your dating history, right? Most of us met someone we thought was really cool until we got to know them better. (laughs) Then, you know, disappointment or disillusionment set in because, oh, what was advertised and what was the reality? We're different. So Gallup has some kind of interesting research on six questions employers can ask to uncover remorse. So I'm going to I'm going to give you those now. The primary finding is that when certain policies are promised but not honored or followed by of course the organization's leaders, right that incongruency, that uh, lack of integrity, right? Remorse sets in. So ask yourself the following questions. Um Is flexibility consistent or dependent on the team manager, right? So per Gallup, 51% of employees say that they would change jobs for flex time. 35% say that they would change jobs for a flexible working location. And this has, has of course, been, um, this is one of the weird benefits of COVID, right? We're getting flexible working locations. So flexibility really matters. Flexibility is for hours, for location, in reporting, even in collaboration. So is it easy to duck out of work for a personal appointment? Does this apply to everyone in the organization? Is it fair? So check your flexibility, right? Number two, are remote workers treated as equals? With people returning to the office now, we are seeing some, I hate to say it, I'll say bias instead of discrimination, but woo, it's bordering on discrimination. Um, Remote workers are 30% less likely to strongly agree that they have discussed their development with their leader in the past six months. Huh. 
So if you're remote, you're probably not having as frequent of development conversations with your leader. So we need to get on top of that as leaders. Uh, are remote workers treated the same as on-site workers? Are they included in development and performance motivation programs? Are they included in recognition programs? Does their leader have the same number of one-on-one -on -one meetings with them um, as with on-site workers? Number three, do leaders know how to manage in a matrixed environment? So per Gallup's research, 84% of US employees today participate in matrixed teams. And the biggest challenge, of course, for workers is prioritizing their work and the excessive amount <laughs> of time and meetings. Oh my gosh, up to one third of their day. Or I know those of you listening are probably thinking, oh no, <laughs> it's more than a third of my day in meetings. Eek, how are you helping your workers to prioritize? So um, I'm gonna uh, reference a prior blog with a tool on this so that you can uh, give a little help on priority. So, um, I also want to include effective meetings just because uh, an effective meetings resource because many of our clients love this. Um, number four, do leaders understand gig workers, freelance workers, temp workers? So per Gallup's gig economy perspective paper, 36% of all U.S. workers participate in a gig work arrangement in some capacity. And with freelance workers, it's essential to ensure they click with your culture quickly. This is where, you know, compelling, clear mission, values, purpose, vision, right? And a set of core values make a difference. Gig workers must be brought into your tribe quickly and emotionally engaged quickly too. And last, as a leader, it's your job to ensure they're welcomed into the team and they feel just as safe and as much belonging and as much mattering as the permanent, if you will, workers from the get-go. Number five, are development programs personalized in a meaningful way. Now, in the past, I've talked about individual development plans and we'll include a sample um, and a template um, to ensure that your team really feels that their growth is important to the organization. So are your leaders helping to co-create IDPs, individual development plans with their workers? Are they having quarterly or, oh God, worst case, annual development check-ins? Are they allocating time for workers to develop? Or are they saying, hey, you wanna develop yourself? That's called after hours. Uh, it's not entirely cool. Number six, are employees offered and encouraged to participate in well-being programs and other benefits? So uh, SHRM, Society for Human Resource Management, um, a while ago did a survey and they found this big gap between the benefits companies actually offer and the benefits employees think their company offers. Why? Well, I find two reasons with my executive coaching clients. And one, the onboarding process isn't really effectively communicating the actual benefits. And two, actual annual benefits summaries are not being offered to refresh people's memory. So when you provide a benefit summary, I'm going to put one on the show page. That would be helpful to you guys. When you provide this annually, people go, oh my gosh, I'm actually getting a lot more benefits than I thought. Oh, I feel better at the company. Oh, yay. I will stick around. Right? <laughs> Maybe I won't have buyer's remorse after all. So the net net buyer's remorse occurs when an employee experiences a disconnect, a disappointment between what they understood a culture was and a job was and what it actually ended up being. And leaders can tackle and prevent this problem really by ensuring that the job description, we call them impact description, is clear. The policies are clear. The above six questions are addressed. The employee experience is consistent. Let's just do a quick, like a bunny recap. So six questions, right? Is flexibility consistent or dependent on the team manager? Let's hope that it's consistent. Number two, are remote workers treated as equals? Number three, do leaders know how to manage in a matrixed environment where people have uh, dotted line reporting, et cetera? Number four, do leaders understand and value gig, gig workers? Number five, are development programs personalized in a meaningful way? And number six, are employees offered and encouraged to participate in well being programs and other benefits? So, how consistent, how compelling is your employee experience? Thank you for joining me today. 
Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there, and please tell your friends.